Progressive Christians on TikTok are going wild and I can't help but respond. Hey, what's up guys? It's Isaac David and this is The Daily Disciple where I help you follow Jesus daily. If you're new to this channel, I'm putting up videos every single week, so subscribe because uh, you're gonna have a good time. Before we get into today's video, I just wanna give a huge shout out to everyone on Patreon. It means so much to me that you guys continue to support me on there. Uh, we need 19 more patrons to reach the goal for this month. So if you wanna help support what I'm doing, helping people find Jesus and follow him daily, Daily, I might ask you to go to the link in my description and you get all sorts of benefits along with that. But just to be real with you guys, you guys have honestly changed my life. Like uh, the, the amount of you that's on there already, um, it's meant that I can spend more time on this and dedicate days off where I'm not at my other job. I'm just here making content for you guys. And I'd love to do this full time. That's my dream. That's my goal. So um, your guys support means a lot to me. And thank you so much for helping me do that. Okay, so now you guys know I'm on TikTok. Well, maybe some of you don't. If you don't, at It's Isaac David on TikTok. I post quite a bit on there. It's actually my biggest social media platform. So I spend a lot of time and energy on it, learning about it. And so also that means consuming content. The funny thing about TikTok is that you often come across things that you never expect, or maybe on YouTube, you know, your experience or watching experience is very catered to what you like, what you agree with, or it's what you decided to subscribe to. But on TikTok, you're offered up random things from random people. The other day, I saw somebody shooting a TikTok in jail. I'm like, you got a phone in jail? Did he sneak it in? How does he have Wi-Fi? A lot of questions, but it's very interesting. Also, people at like family reunions or in college dorms, all sorts of stuff. And I came across some a series of progressive Christian TikToks that were very interesting to me, kind of mind blowing. Um, and so I wanted to respond to them today, not as a means of hating on them, because you guys know me. I'm not like that's not my M.O. I don't want to just pull up stuff to make fun of. I actually want things that will build us up and, you know, help us actually follow Jesus daily. And I think through these things, we'll actually learn where we can go off in conforming our own beliefs to the culture as opposed to the word of God and some of the excuses that people use in doing that and and um, the, the honestly the trouble, the problem with progressive and woke Christianity and what that actually looks like. There are a lot of things to learn here, so let's get into it and uh, yeah, let's go. Growing up in the church as a good old Christian boy, I was taught to check the teachings of the world against the teachings of the Bible because if it didn't line up with the teachings of the Bible, well then obviously that's how you would know it's not true. But what I was not taught was to check my interpretation of the Bible against what I knew to be the character of God. And I think if Christians performed that test, they would have a much clearer picture of what the Bible actually says. Okay, a lot of meat in this. This guy's coming in with a hot take. So, you need to interpret the Bible through what you believe the character of God to be. Hmm, interesting. I mean, if you've grown up in the church, you know the whole thing about, look, if you, something's going on in the culture, right? There's a, a new uh, new ideology or something else like that, and we got to compare that to the Word of God, and that's how you be a good Christian, because you're discerning, right? Of course, we do that on this channel all the time, but this guy's coming in with his hot take saying, no, 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 what you think God's character is, that's what's most important, and then you use that lens to look in the Bible, and if something doesn't, you know, line up exactly, then you know that's that ain't it. My question is this, how do you know God's character without the Bible, right? Okay, well, you have general revelation, so you can see the world around you. Um, it's beautifully designed. It is, he is creative. He's a creative God. He's an orderly God. Um, he focuses on um, simplicity, but also complexity, and he merges those two really nicely within creation. There are certain things that we can identify about him through general revelation through creation. So that tells me a little bit about his character, but I still need to know more if I'm really going to use it as my main interpreting principle of the Bible. So then we look to the special revelation of God, the Bible, right? And he's spelled it out clearly who he is, what he has done, who we are, all that we need. Oh, it's in there. We're good, homie, right? Like we're, we're good. We're solid. The problem is, is this guy's like, well, you know, that's not a special revelation. Like, come on now. Like that's probably, probably has some mistakes in it a little bit. What's most important is what I think God is, who I, he, he uses the phrase how, who I already know God's character to be really interesting. You already know who God is without the Bible. Hmm. I, I, I don't know if that's necessarily true because I have a feeling that often that that's just coming out of what you got want God to be right? If we, we're like, ah, you know what? God isn't, he's not about that hell thing. Like that, that doesn't really align with who I think God's character is, or I don't think God is judgmental or he has any kind of wrath in him at all, or maybe he doesn't even hate sin, or maybe some things in the Bible that 
he calls sin there. Yeah, but that's not really in alignment with what I think God's character is. So that needs to change a little bit. Some people say, I would never serve a God that would send people to hell. Well, then you're willing to only serve a God that you can manufacture in your own mind because a God that is truly loving, that's the interesting thing. And they're so obsessed with love. God's about love. God's about love. God's about love. But if a God, if God is truly loving and he is truly good, he has to punish sin. Think of a judge that just lets criminals go free. That is not a loving judge. Just ask their family members of the, of the um, victims. They're not happy happy about it. They're like, judge, what are you doing? How could you do this? You're a terrible, corrupt judge. So if God's going to be good and he's going to be loving, he has to punish sin. But a lot of people don't like that either. They don't like the idea of sin. They don't like the idea that we're broken or we need saving. And so they kind of lift that from it. They're like, well, I don't know if that really fits in the Bible. So let's just remove it. But when they do that, they actually strip the beauty away from the gospel. You see, the gospel means good news. And in order for the gospel to be truly good news, we need to understand the bad news, the bad news of sin, of God's judgment of us and how we actually deserve the penalty for that sin, which is hell. But the good news of the gospel is that Jesus came to this earth fully God and fully man without sin to live the sinless life that we could not live to die on the cross, a death we deserve to die for our own sins against God. And he rose again on the third day, defeating death so that we could be born again again so that we could be freed from the presence and power and ultimately the penalty of sin. That's a beautiful message. So no, do not interpret the Bible based on your own presuppositions about who God ought to be. No, look for the Bible. Look to the Bible for that special revelation of who God is actually claimed to be, what he has done, and conform your life to that. I got to mute the audio on this one because it has copyrighted music, but you'll get the point. Karen wanted to spend her life as a missionary, bringing Christianity to the third world. That's nice. Everybody loves that. Found out they're happy in their own religions. And she just had a white savior complex. <laughs> what? Okay, so it's like, okay, well, that's nice. Like, you're going to go evangelize. That's cool. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every nation. That's cool. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the part where Jesus was like, yeah, but not other nations, though, because you're going to be like, oh, don't have a white savior complex. Come on now. Stay in your own place. They're probably happy in their religions. Just chill. Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like, that's like woke Jesus. He comes in. Go into all the world. Uh, not the world. Uh, you know what? Just keep it yourself. You know what? People are probably happy in their own religions or maybe they're atheists or maybe they're agnostics. Maybe they believe in a lot of gods. That's cool, right? I, did I? It's not like I said I was the only way or anything, or like the truth of the life. Wait, did I say that? No, probably not. Christianity is not about you being happy. Like, bro, like that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Like when we, if you believe that, and if you start teaching that, that's going to lead to so much destruction and heartache. And I honestly think a lot of people were taught that in church. If, G if you have Jesus in your life, you're going to be happy, fulfilled, wealthy, healthy, like all this stuff. Um, but that's not the case. Right. God doesn't promise that our emotions will always be like, well, we're always going to be so happy and joyful. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like we're in a quartet or something like that. I don't know why that came to my mind. I just imagine at the peak of happiness, you're in like a quartet singing. Never mind. I'm going to cut this out. Do we forget about all those verses about going through trials and experiencing heartache and weep with those who weep and all those kind of things? And then also we need to understand the heart of Christianity is not that we, okay, well, we go there to make them more happy people. No, no, no. We go there to proclaim the good news that Jesus has taken the penalty for our sins. And so we're saying, hey, look, you know what? You're not perfect as you are. You need somebody else. You need Jesus. He said he's the only way. You are not enough in and of yourself. You need Jesus. It doesn't matter if you're happy or not. Obviously, that is a very intolerant message according to the world, but it is nonetheless true. And that's the reason that we are called to go into all the world and proclaim the gospel, making disciples. And the interesting thing, why does she bring race into this? She has a white savior complex. I feel like this is the same kind of lady that would say that Christianity is a white man's religion is only used to oppress people. Well, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more after we watch this next video here here we go this is prepare yourself this is going to be uh intense i'm getting ripped tonight all right p that are we ready to talk about how white christianity does nothing but perpetuate rape culture and it started at the conception of jesus mary did consent to that okay okay that's a lot that's a lot that's, i was not prepared for that that was um what what
<laughs> There's so much in that. Okay, let's talk about white Christianity. Uh, you know, talking about white savior complex, white Christianity. I don't know why progressive Christians are so obsessed with race. Like, did Ephesians 3.28 mean nothing to you? There is neither Jew nor Gentile, slave nor free, male nor female. We are all one in Christ. Christianity is not a white man's religion. And anybody that tries to propagate that message is lying to you. Jesus wasn't white. And anybody that uses the church as a means to gain power over people or oppress people, those are not Christians. Those are people that are trying to usurp the Christian system or church or whatever kind of institution or organization in order to uh, maintain dominance or whatever. Like, that's not a Christian thing. And we can uh, gladly all point all those people out. That's bad. Don't do that. But Christianity is not a white man's religion. I don't know about you, but I go to a multi-ethnic church. Are those people being subjected? Objected to the white man's religion? Are they being indoctrinated to white Christianity? No, we as Christians need to be focused on our central identity. Our central identity is not in our race. It is in Christ. And if you disagree with that, I'm sorry, but that's what the Bible has to call us to. It is that we are new creations in Christ, and that is our central identity. Okay, but she accuses the church and Christianity of doing nothing but propagating rape culture, which is quite an accusation. But here's what I would say, is that while the culture um, celebrates promiscuity and perversions of all sorts, they applaud it. God has called us to something much greater, a higher standard, where we're supposed to keep each other accountable. That's an aspect of it, where we're supposed to understand power dynamics within the church to keep a careful eye and making sure that there isn't abuse. And when abuse happens, calling it out. And should the church get better at this? Of course, but we are made up of individuals. The church is made up of individuals. So it's our job to keep ourselves accountable as well, continuing to pursue Christ. But here's the thing, at least we have a standard by which we're able to say abuse is bad and this is wrong. At least we have a standard. See, the world is just appealing to whatever the, the, the morality of the day is, which is constantly changing. You see progressive Christians trying to twist the Bible as quickly as they can to try to appease the woke mob, but they can't even do it fast enough. They're like, we're changing this. No, we don't believe this. We don't believe this. You see, when we hold to the word of God, it actually gives us standards of justice by which we can say abuse, that's wrong. We, you're out, right? You need to repent. You need to be punished for this. Christianity elevates the vulnerable of society and takes care of them. That is what we are called to. I don't even think I need to address that last part where she's like, Mary didn't even give consent. Like, what on this earth? Like, oh my goodness. I don't understand people that they try everything. They will do anything possible to obfuscate um, their accountability before God. They will accuse him of every conceivable thing. Whether it's the Old Testament or New Testament, they will bring accusations against him to justify their own unbelief. Okay. 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 Man, you know, we have two decisions. We can either look at God's word and conform that to our own lifestyle. So, you know what? That doesn't really fit with me. You know what? I'm going to kind of manipulate and move it a little bit. Um, we'll still maybe call ourselves a Christian, but you know what? We don't want all that bigoted, hateful stuff in there that's just outdated, that is not relevant to our culture nowadays. So I'm just going to take the good stuff. We can either do that. And, you know, our life is at the forefront. Everything else conforms it to what we want. What we desire is most important. What we think is good, that's what we're going to take in. And everything else, we're just going to kind of spit out. Like a little bit of an erasable Bible. Or we can conform our lives to what God says, which is what we are called to do. I'm not saying it's easy, friends. But I'm saying that when we walk in step with Jesus, when we begin to... Seek after him as most important when we don't understand our own opinion and perspective as the most important, but rather we want to conform our lives and beliefs and character and heart to that of Christ then there's so much freedom from that because we're no longer held to this standard, this new religion of wokeism or progressivism where they're like, you need to conform your life constantly to our ever changing morality. No, you don't need to do that. You need to hold your life against the standard of who God is and what he has done and what he has said in his word. And when you fall down, there is grace and there is forgiveness available. There is no forgiveness in the progressive Christian world. There is no forgiveness because it is a constantly changing morality. 
where it is constant repentance. It is constant, oh, I'm sorry I offended you. I'm sorry I've done this. I'm the oppressor here. I am a terrible piece of garbage, all that. But there's never any forgiveness and lightness knowing that God is who he says he is and he has forgiven us and we are free. And we don't need to constantly be trying to evaluate, is this who God is? I don't know if this aligns with what I believe his character is. And maybe I take this or lose this. It's like, no, just sit at the table and enjoy and rest and follow because what God is inviting us to is light. And that's what I want to invite you into. While other people may celebrate confusion and not really knowing exactly, I'm not sure if God exists or I'm not sure if Jesus is really God. I'm inviting you to know God, to love him, to know that he is who he says he is in the word of God and to begin to develop a relationship with him. And to get a little self-reflective, I think each of us needs to look at our own lives and say, what have I taken out of the Bible or erased out of the Bible because it didn't fit what I wanted to believe about God or it didn't fit my lifestyle or it didn't fit, um, it made me uncomfortable because I had to confront some stuff in my own life. What are those things? And we can bring those to God and say, God, hey, I've been doing this. I'm sorry. I, I, I've been prideful in thinking that I should control what is true, what is right, what is good. When you are the definition, when you are the standard of that, can you forgive me? And he does. And once again, he gets, he, he coaxes us to get up and walk again with him. And that is the amazing father that he is. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on all of this. I know there's a lot of meat to it, but I love to hear what you think about it. Thank you again to everyone on Patreon. It honestly means so much to me that you continue to support me and my mission of helping people find Jesus and follow him daily. Um, it means a lot. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. God bless.